planet is on the verge of collapse because that sickness in the brain has infected too much and too many of our species deny or forget or are not taught or blatantly disregard that kuleana of giving back of sustaining so in this dance in this movement to protect this mountain is about is also what to do is helping to wake up every single one of us yeah. it's not just to demand the government no no it's about every single one of us remembering that uh it's your job it's all of our job that's why we have to kukuru, we have to build together. And part of that, how you remember that is to remember that you are sacred. Every single one of us, you, we're sacred. What does sacred mean, mean in the Hawaiian world, in the Hawaiian realm? Is that somehow you are contributing back. You are sacred because you are part of that which gives back to the great cycles of life. That's why when we deem places sacred, it's because of the crucial roles that they play, especially in the environmental laws, like the Mauna. Why don't we touch these places? Because they have big kuleana that feeds everything else. What was the kapu of our people before about how, you know, we had strict kapu, we are regulating our resources. We don't take. If it's not time, you don't take. Mamai, we off you. You is not, not, no one of us is more important than Aina. That's not how I'm wrong. What make you any more important than the fish? That ia is part of a whole cycle. So when our people say, when our kupuna would learn, and we can come aina to this aina, and they learn that this is the time of year that this particular ia or fish are spawning to make the multitudes more, you leave them alone. But if you are greedy to that point that you don't care because I want it now, and you break that, you're not just taking one fish. <laughs> You are disrupting a cycle that could have produced many, not just for us, but the multitude that help to feed and are part or also help to eat other things. We disrupt all of that. Yeah, so when we hold our, our wants, our own personal, uh, what we feel, entitlements, higher than the, than the common body, yeah, than the natural order, well, that's why we're screwed right now. And I don't know if I can promise these kids a future in 20 years. We are the first generation right now that cannot promise our children a future. I cannot promise Keiki that there will be clean water for them in 20 years or clean air. We are the first generation to ever have to face that reality. Thanks. What are we going to do? We can continue to sit in the fire and just acknowledge, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. Or, we can get through that, realize where we are, and start to actively engage in healing that. And that's what this moment and this movement is all about. So, accumulation of all our mana, all of our energy, all of our hands, yeah? accumulation of all of our personal sacrifices to give up some of those things that when we really look at and realize, oh, I'm kind of part of that problem. We all go into this kuli here. But we need this collectiveness. That's how we're going to build. So this hula here was written and, and composed uh, just a couple years ago. That's an understanding also the continuation of our people. We're not bound only to whatever is held in the history book. If we need to create ceremony for here and now, if we've got a hakunu mele here and now, they are just as real and just as powerful as the ancient and old chants too. If we act and live them, that's to the point that they're going to last the test of time to become those sacred ancient prayers for our descendants. So we're a living people. So this ceremony that we're creating here now to address the issue that we're facing here and now is comprised of, of ancient and contemporary. We're guided by our kupuna to continue to haku today for future, for to guide us into our future and to set the example for our future. Cool, cool. So we're all going to learn the chat right now because it's super easy and you're going to engage. I'm going to come all the way out here. <laughs> Kaku, everybody. Hey, ahala, hey, cool, cool. 
He ahala he kukuru. We are asking the question, what is, what is it to kukuru? What is a pillar? Yeah. What is a pillar? You give, you give, you're going to answer yourself. What's that, a great example of a pillar? He mauna. What? He mauna. He ahala he kukuru. He mauna. A mountain is a pillar. It helps to hold up all these ecosystems, all these cycles of life. It continues to help to hold up all of existence. It continues to hold up our life. There's a great example. He ahala he kukuru. He ahala he kukuru. He ahu. He ahu. The ahu, the altar. That serves as a pillar. It's almost pretty much every culture on the planet. You go dig back into your ancestries. There's a form of altar or shrine, however you want it, uh, ahu. And what is the function of the ahu? It helps to manifest physically in front of you that of the greater picture. Mm. Yeah? Those things like the mountain that sometimes are so big and so fast and outside of our realm of comprehension that we bring this little altar right in front of us to help us be able to connect. It serves as a gathering place. This chant was specifically written uh, about that one ahu that sits up there in Uluru as it serves as an accumulating place where hundreds and sorry, tens of thousands have gathered to connect to that mountain. So it serves as a pillar. As small as it might be compared to the mountain, it is an extension of, and by its existence of knowing that it is an extension of the greater sacred, it is a pillar, it is an anchor to help to hold and support our engagement, our connection to the greater. He ahala he kukuru. He ahala he kukuru. He pohaku. Every stone, every pohaku is part of a foundation, is part of a pillar. So now don't just look at the whole pillar itself, or don't just look only at the, the ahu, but acknowledge the effort and the commitment for, of every single one of the pohaku in that ahu, in itself, giving of itself to serve the greater. That's a pillar. It's not saying, oh, how come the ahu, ahu is bigger than me? It just knows that it is part of. And yet that, that pohaku is also the pohaku when you look at the mauna. The stone that is the mauna. It does not seem itself, wait, there's that one cartoon, there's a great quote about that. Oh, I forgot it. It's great. Oh. Anyway. Yeah. Don't feel yourself so insignificant. What makes that you, if you see to yourself as only one little stone, why would you be less important than the stones that found the face that was the point? Yeah. So everybody just knowing that they're part of it, you're a pillar. And reminding us, He ahara he kukuru. He ahara he kukuru. He kanaka. Every single one of us, Kanaka, you are a pillar. Don't forget that. It's when we start to see ourselves as, as inferior or less than or not worthy enough, that's when you are losing your ability to be a pillar for your family, to be a pillar for your community, to be a pillar for our Aina, for our Lahu, for our world. When you think, when we fall into the entrapment of so many things that teach us every single day, you know, every single commercial is like, you're less than unless you buy this product. When we buy into that BS, and we think ourselves unworthy, we are, we are not doing our job of being part of that that helps to hold. So what we're saying, you are important. I am of no more importance than those up there watching the crosswalk on the mountain. We just have different function. I am no more important than the auntie and the brothers and all them who have to clean the luas. I could know to the end. I'm not more important. We are all important. As long as we know that we are contributing and that we are giving the best that we can. He ahala he kukuru. Here we are. We are the pillars. And we are rising and reclaiming our right to be kia'i, to be part of this aina. We are reclaiming our power as a people, as communities, as families, 